Love Line. Love Line is meant for an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. This is Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board yep. certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Drew is in Syracuse, New York. Yes, Drew? Yes, Adam. Yes, and Drew. You would love it here. It's beautiful. The trees are changing colors. Crystal mm. clean, beautiful, cool air. Mm. Uh, yeah, they're changing colors here too, but it's because uh, gangbangers are spray painting on them. Yeah, so it's I a know. little, it's a slightly different vibe. It's a different kind of gold. Yeah, Bonnie Somerville is uh, here tonight. Uh, Bonnie is uh, first season on uh, NYPD Blue, uh, of course, on uh, ABC Tuesday nights at uh, ten o'clock, and uh, also in uh, Without a Paddle, which we were uh, talking about last night. I think Drew. Yep. Fifty-five million dollars. Thank you very much. Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's oh wait, get your Chris. Wow. You gotta tell the guests talking to the microphone. That's you gotta turn the mic toward them. That would be nice there you if go. someone told me. Yeah, what go to ahead. Do. Move it around, baby doll. You don't you, you know, okay. you don't have to chase it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let the mic come to you. I do. I never chase it. Never. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you know what? When you don't chase it, it makes the mic want you more. Always. Yeah. That's that's what what yeah. I did with my mic. Yeah. I was like, I'm not into mics. Right. And the mic was like, What's up? Everyone's into me. And I'm like, Yeah, no. just not my thing. You have to earn it. Yeah. Yeah. Prove it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Drew. Hi, Drew. Yes. Hi there. Yeah. You'd like Bonnie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's no, good. I, I saw the movie. You didn't see the movie. She's good looking. Were you yeah. really talking about it, or are you just saying Yeah. No, no we, we were. were. No, Drew saw the movie. You liked it? Yeah. My wow. kids loved it. Yeah. Drew liked it. The kids loved it. Wow. Everyone was happy. And let me... Oh, and Jen Chris moving the mic again. Thank you. The, um... I'm the, looking um, at 55 million four hundred twenty-one. Fifty-five. Yeah. Yeah. Really? That's yeah. a lot. Yeah, you're a big time, baby doll. Wow. And, I'm huge. And here's uh, the other thing, Drew. Bonnie's right up your alley. <laughs> Drew, Drew will enjoys... He, he likes blondes. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Drew, well, no, Drew, you can say that because your wife is blonde, you see? That, that's right. That's, oh, that's well, right then now. you have to say that, actually. I then get, you have I no choice. On that. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but it's tough because you're still admitting to liking somebody in a sense you, you know what i'm saying right yeah, she knows. somebody else she knows. right yeah. all right anyway drew passionate man bonnie beautiful woman you guys make a wonderful couple Thank that's you. all i'm saying Thank you. all right so uh drew's in syracuse so you, you really couldn't get further away could you <laughs> could you get further than syracuse I, I could be actually in the atlantic ocean yeah what'd you yeah. do over there Spoke at another another Ithaca school, this time Ithaca College. I, mean, I was at Cornell oh. a couple months ago. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, made that lovely trip from, you know, 5 a.m. LAX to Chicago to Syracuse, get in a car, drive two hours to Ithaca, drive two hours back so I can do the yeah. radio show. That's good let me, uh, let, me, uh, let me see if I can do that math. Y you're averaging about 18 cents a mile, Drew. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, maybe not less. Even. Not Maybe yet. Less. Yeah, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just do the math one of these days. Here's the you thing. Know what, if, you if they make it at least 50 cents a mile, don't go. I enjoy talking to college yeah, okay. so All right, much. Man. I really how do. About, how about, but wouldn't you enjoy it more if they're actually in the continental United States? Like Possibly. You, you, yeah. you didn't have to take. <laughs> All uh, things being equal, yes. Uh, yeah, you didn't have to take like the spruce goose and a couple of barges and uh, you know spend the night in a hut to get to where these kids are <laughs> camping. Yeah, wouldn't it be nicer? All right, uh, how's uh, NYPD Blue treating you? By the way, Bonnie, it's great. It's great. It's def It's the greatest show I've ever worked on. By Why? Far. Why? I mean, the show is it runs itself. It's been on forever. They know exactly what they're doing. It's the nicest group of people I've ever met. Really. And the best group of actors I've ever worked with. I mean, Dennis Franz is just amazing. Is is it because, I mean, you feel like the show is secure. I mean, it's it's sort of like, I don't know, when shows are um, young, they're almost like young teenage boys having to prove themselves. Right. And then they sort of mellow into nicer, older guys. Right. Is it a nicer, older guy? Yeah, well, every show I've ever worked on, pretty much with the exception of one, has been a new, fledgling you know, right. suffering, almost getting canceled any minute now show. So right. to get on a show where the, there's no pressure on me at all. I just right. have to show up and do right. a good job and 
Get your paycheck. Get my paycheck, not get fired, and, and hopefully, you know, the, the show is amazing on its own. Wait, is the show on, like, year uh, 11 12. or 12? 12. 12? Wow. wow. Is there a, I, I don't know what's on the air currently. I mean, ER's probably been around for 10 years or 10 something years. like that. I think Law and Reba, Order. Reba's Reba been on 12 years. Yeah, oh. Reba. No, it, I think it's, it <laughs> seems like longer, but no. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think Mama's family's been on for like 44 <laughs> years. <laughs> You don't know. You know that stuff just goes on to like uh, the WB. You have no yeah. idea the stuff's still on. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Law and Order still Maybe on? Maybe is Law and Order even on for twelve? I don't know. I, I uh, well, there's I don't like know. Law and Order Antarctica, Law right. and Order <laughs> BFD Fifty Seventh Street, <laughs> <laughs> Law and Order Drew's Closet, uh, Cincinnati. Dr- I don't um, know. Overhead baggage compartment. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> That'd be good, Drew. All right, so uh, Drew's in uh, Syracuse, where it is uh, one in change in the uh, morning. Yeah, but in my head, I'm still Pacific time, so that's cool. Right. All it's right, all so good. you're cool. You're yeah. cool. And uh, what is it? Is it 40 degrees outside? Yeah, yeah it's good 44, 45 degrees. Yeah. Don't you love it? Mm-hmm. Love it. Nice. I, I Isn't forgot. It I, I haven't had a fall in about 20 years. Uh, like, oh, my God, it's fall here. It's fall. See, yeah. I'm from New York, so I hear that, and I get, I miss it so badly. You're, you're yeah. from New York City, or? I'm from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Wow. Yes. Yeah, it, 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 you actually have seasons. It starts, it starts feeling like football season. You smell it in the air. It smells like fall. Thanksgiving yeah. starts Thanksgiving. feeling like Thanksgiving. Right. Yeah. Th- you know, it actually turns the colors of Thanksgiving. Especially no, there. No, it's yes. so gorgeous right now. All right, Drew. Don't come back. All right. Stay in Syracuse. Fair enough. Are you going to be back tomorrow night? No, I've got to go to Washington, D.C. All right. I, I'm, I'm, okay. listen, I'm the keynote speaker in the, for the National Council on Sexual Addiction and Compulsivity. Boring. Oh. Boring. No, no. Actually, not so boring. boring. Really interesting. Oh, no, wow. not, yeah, okay. Well, that ought to be good. Yeah, good times. Find out what those kids are up to, would you, Drew? <laughs> All the sex addicts? What they're doing? Yeah. Wear yeah. your uh, no anal button. <laughs> you know that ass with the slash? You're wearing your it's, lapel to those things? Just say no to anal. Yeah. Do yeah. that. It's it's just, it, it, everything yeah, in that conference, everything has a, has a double entendre at that conference. No, no, no anal butt ton. Right. All right. All right, buddy. Hey, um, Bonnie. Yes. Have you done any uh, PSAs for uh, ABC? I thought you were going to ask me something else. No, no, but not you know, oh, anal question. I wouldn't go there. No, you're from Brooklyn. That's I good. assume you That's do good. that. I'm saying, I'm saying, <laughs> have, you, <laughs> have you done... Any, uh, if, the, if ABC asks you to do one of those just read or just talk to your kid ones. Hatred is a bad thing. One yeah. of those? Yeah. Would I do it? Yeah. I like those. I like those. I like the ones on the cop cars, the, the, the sort of general ones, like help stop senior abuse. It's <laughs> like, uh, 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 okay. Okay, uh, okay. Well, I'm not currently beating my grandmother. <laughs> Next time I am, I'll think of this. I'll and give I'll it stop. some thought. Okay. So I'm not going to do that. Outside of that, really don't know what to do. Unless they start kicking in doors. Right. Like, I'm, I'm not, should I start talking to my friends about it? Uh, listen, have you been, you know, backhanded Nana <laughs> lately? Or what am I supposed to do to help end Don't senior yell abuse? at Nana. I really, I really think that's just one of those things that someone decided, look, we need bumper stickers to put on cop cars, and the uh, gas, grass, or ass is uh, not going to do, and the no huh. fat chicks isn't going to work. We need something that can just be universally agreed on. You know, no, no stepping on puppies. <laughs> you, you know, like uh, stop senior abuse. Oh, all right, all right. And uh, I like when, uh, like, uh, David Schwimmer just tells you to talk, talk to your kids. Yeah. Did you talk to them? Oh, I like it when they do it in a, in a in a lot with wet floors. And yeah. They, you know, they just happen to be yeah in a, in a warehouse that's been hosed down with There's blue lighting and little just dry like, ice in the background. Yeah. They stop smoke. long enough. There's lo- smoke rising. <laughs> they stop long enough to tell you to talk to your kids, and then they walk away. They don't tell you what to talk about right. or anything. It's just, would you talk to your kids? Talk to your kids. It's condescending. All right, Drew, you ready to rock? Hey, did you see that Rodney Dangerfield died? Uh-oh. I heard yeah. that. Uh-oh. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Now I feel bad because I always said bad things about him, you know? Always had like Bad karma. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. He was a great man. He was a great man. Great comic. He lived a long life. What hey, do you how you to, doing? Ah! <laughs> oh, please. He what lived do you, a very long life. What do, you, what do you make it to? Like 80? 82. 82? Wasn't he in a yeah. coma for a while? He was yeah, in a I coma. Mean, for, yeah. For, for, he, he, it's was, bad. he was on Kimmel like three weeks ago. I, I kid you not. I mean, I, Rodney Dangerfield literally... 
uh, got carted out to Kimmel to plug his book. It was less than a month ago, and and I remember just thinking, what what are you oh, what are you doing? Like you know, enjoy your old and uh, pal. Dude, yeah. Like two weeks later, into the into the coma. But anyway, a good. Uh, I'd say he had a bad first half of his life and a good second half. Yes, yeah, Drew? I think that's yeah. right. And by the way, um, how come there wasn't much uh, coverage on uh, Rodney Dangerfield in a coma? I, yeah, I didn't even they, know that until today. Somebody said at work, yeah, he was in a coma. I said, they were, they, as for how long? I mean, the, the, the press accepts the gloss that people put on it. Look, you have, a, you have a stroke and a coma after aortic valve surgery. That is bad times. I told you, I said, that he's not going to make it. And then right. he, got to, he developed septicemia infection. That, that, it, was, it was over weeks ago, I, I could tell. Right. But of course, you know, the, the press go, oh, well, he's just in a little coma. No big deal. Just a coma. Uh, everyone, yeah. you know, they didn't it's say like Gilligan's coma. Island. You bonk him over it's the a head. Small you know. coma. It's yeah. Nothing, yeah. Mini yeah. coma. Nothing to worry about. Coma. Uh, it they drives call me crazy. Them. Yeah. yeah I, I, all, I'm, all I'm saying is, is uh, one of the uh, most popular stand ups uh, and, and comedic figures of all time goes into a coma. And uh, you barely hear about it. He I mean, doesn't it get a, any yeah. respect, I guess. It was in a coma. Oh, now you're going to hell. No, no I'll see I, you there. I, I couldn't resist that. That was it, two weeks. The guy's in a coma. No one says it. Meanwhile, there's a volcano that's uh, belching just a little, like a handful of ash every other yeah. day, and every, yeah. it's all all the news can talk about. Right. All right. You ready to rock here, Drew? Let's go. You're you've got the uh, phones at all your right. end. All right. <laughs> you know what's funny, Drew? No. I oh yeah that oh God is that true? Yes. You do not know what is funny. <laughs> Nobody knows like what's not funny more than Drew. <laughs> well, I've never it, truer words were never spoken. Yeah, never I, that, never spoken, that's, Drew. That's why I was yes. so emphatic about it. Absolutely not. All no. right, here, here here's what I'm saying. I always whenever Drew goes out of town, Drew picks the calls by sticking these little uh, stickums up to uh, the call that he wants. And whenever he leaves town, the stickum is always on the uh, little post-it note, is always next to the call that was from 22 hours ago when we were here last night. And I always look down and go, oh, that's the one Drew picked. Are these Even random? It, it, they're going to be tonight. Hey, by the way, I just went on, wait yeah. a second, Adam, I, I just went online and looked at the previous reports on Roddy Dangerfield. And uh, here's the headline, Dangerfield in light coma. Really? In light, light coma. Light coma. Light coma. What yeah. is that? Wow. That's stupid. It's idiot. It's it's it's. it's, it's I, I want to kill the press. Yeah, Ridiculous. I um, I uh, I was telling Drew the other day. Like, my, here here would be I would be horrible. Like, if if a loved one was in a coma, I'd be you know because they always do that thing where they go, you got to talk to them. You really you need to <laughs> just movies, go over there. The yeah, you need yeah. to be with them. Right. I'd be over there and it'd be like, hi, Dad. How you doing? Dad. Hey. Pops, yeah, not nothing. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get something to eat. Does anyone yeah. need anything? I, it'd be about thirty <laughs> seconds of me sitting there looking at that uh, potato before I just went. Uh, all right, look, uh, we got two moves here. Either I'm go I'm going on a run, or some somebody got a sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> One or the other, and a, and a kegger. I'm going on a run. Who needs something? Yeah, but then what if they can hear you? See, then you you're can't. in trouble because the then they wake up. Yeah, yeah. And then your dad no. wakes up and he's like, no. "Yeah, I, I don't know, no. Drew. What about no. talking to him when they're in the coma? Maybe no? it. Well, maybe it might lighten the spirits while they're in the coma, but they will not remember. No way. Okay. All Especially right. an old guy like this that's in a metabolic coma. Impossible. All right. What's the difference between a metabolic coma and a coma coma? And a coma. Well, uh, yeah. A coma from, from a structural problem in the brain or being bonked in the head. That kind of thing is different than your body. Is you're getting you know multi system failure. You've had I a see. stroke. It's, it's a you know you're old that that's not that's bad times. Okay, I'm reading wow. through this thing too. It's it's the wife. It's clear it was the wife was going. She calls it a light coma. She says he's getting better. She says right. he's looking at her and smiling. No, 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 no. All right. Well, that's why they spun it that way. He'll be missed. Yeah, Michael. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Twenty two. Yep. What's up? Uh, I've had some debates. I've had many health classes. I'm in college now. And uh, I've had health in college, <clears throat> and uh, they never really explain the day after pill. And I've had people say, "Oh, it's abortion," but I've always said, "No, it can't be abortion." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, have you looked, have you looked up you. the science? Have you looked up the the material? You know, I've looked it up in the books that I got through the classes in college I took, the health classes. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. You're going to have to go get the primary literature out of the medical literature. Well, he's the asking is, you, Drew. He's well, if you. You, if you're, you're talking about emergency contraception, right? Not, yeah. not RU-486, but the, yeah. but the emergency contraception, which is a just a pill, which is 
Plan B, it's a progesterone that you take within 72 hours of an unprotected intercourse. Mm -hmm. It is not an abortion pill. It prevents the egg from being released. There was a New England Journal article just a couple weeks ago that finally admitted that's the way it works. It may have a finite effect on implantation, the same, about the same risk as the birth control pill taken normally, about the same risk as the medication taken off the market last week, Vioxx, we don't talk about that, about the same risk as Celebrex, of, of, of theoretically maybe interfering with implantation, but its primary effect is by preventing ovulation. That's why you have three days. Sperm hang out, hangs out waiting for an egg for three days. And if an egg is released in that three days, you get pregnant. If you suppress the release, you don't get pregnant. And my, if the uh, egg... True, the, true. My, my sperm doesn't hang. Yeah, yours isn't there for no, three it's days. same with the coma pop. I'll see. It's my sperm's like, hey, where's any eggs? Nothing. I'm going on a run. And uh, they actually run. Even so, it takes your sperm about a day. A run. It, it takes them about a day to get. feet and they run yeah. away. Yeah, they make they, that they sound. Go, I, 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 <laughs> All right. They take right, yes, about Drew, a day to get where they yeah. need to go. Drew, you're outraged. you're outraged. You're outraged. I'm outraged. Typically, no, I'm, they take I'm three angry. days. Yeah. Typical. Well, three days they hang out, but it takes them about a day to get where they need to be. Yeah, but, you know. It's about a day's journey. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I uh, we're uh, we're outraged by this because uh, we've always said this morning after pills, not an abortion pill, and everyone should get on board with this, especially the uh, a hole, two faced uh, right wingers, uh, the religious nut jobs who uh, claim to be anti abortion. Here's your chance to put an end to uh, abortion, and of course they come out against it, Absolutely. which just says to me they like preaching more than they uh, like teenagers. Right. So you're either, either in, you're interested in helping kids or you're not. You're interested in protecting an ideology. Which is it? Well, that's the thing. To not right. let that information out, that the egg isn't even fertilized, is, is just a crime. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Totally agree. For all these people that are against abortion. All right. Yep. Because, uh, listen, I, yeah. I would not be talking about it if it did, in fact, have its primary effect as from impairing implantation. Then it would be an abortion pill. I agree with that. It doesn't work that way. Drew, passionate about his abortion. I love that. Passionate about his blondes. Passionate about traveling for a nickel. <laughs> many, many passions, Drew. Has. <laughs> Very passionate. Passionate man. about without a paddle. Yeah. Oh, I like love that movie. Without a paddle. Yeah. Fifty-five million dollars thank believe. you very much so happy yeah and a lot of that i gotta say a it, lot of that is going to me i gotta say well <laughs> no it's not but uh if uh, bonnie somerville was not in that movie i gotta believe it would be in the low teens in ter terms of uh, box office gross right now you bet. Oh, i gotta yeah. agree with you yeah and i'm talking 13 maybe 14 uh let's talk to caitlin yeah caitlin. all right talk to caitlin caitlin Hi. You're 18? Yes. What's up? Um, well, I'm having problems with my boyfriend. Um, we've been dating for about 15 months now, mm -hmm. and until about three or four months ago, every time we had sex, I had an orgasm. Mm -hmm. And for the last three or four months, like, it's kind of hit and miss, but it doesn't mm -hmm. seem to bother him. Like, I have been trying to figure out what's wrong and trying to improve the situation. I've talked to him about it. And, like, he doesn't care. It doesn't, I mean, mm -hmm. like, he cares, but he doesn't want to do anything about it. And I don't know what to do. What would you like him to do? I want him to make a valid effort to make sex mm -hmm. more enjoyable for me. Because as mm -hmm. of right now, I don't even really want to have it anymore. Mm -mm. You know? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well. Yeah. I'll tell you, you, you have sex with an angry vagina, and you got problems, my friend. Well... <laughs> The thing is, like, two months I ago, saw that. That was a bumper sticker on an LAPD car. It was right next to end senior abuse. <laughs> it was a PSA on HBO. Yeah. Schwimmer was talking about uh, never having sex with them. <laughs> oh, and talk to your kids. I, they should just start combining them. <laughs> about crime. About crime. <laughs> and angry vaginas. Caitlin? Yeah? Yeah. Um, it was, so you're angry at him. And uh, is he not giving you oral sex? Well, sometimes, but not very often. He expects me to give him oral sex more than he All right. Me. Is, is that what you need, though? Is that what you're missing? Well, no. Like, I just want him to understand what I need. Like, I yeah, yeah. started masturbating about two months ago because I realized that I could get myself off easier than he could. If and I had, talked to him about uh, it, and I yeah. tried to tell him, like, if I can show you what you can do. And he's like, well, no, that doesn't turn me on. And, like, he acts... Um, as if that is an insult to him that I can get. All right, all right. Well, why are you with him? this guy? Why are you with him? Yeah. 
Oh, I love him. No, you do no. not. Oh, yeah, come on. Too. The bloom is off the rose. He's uh, he's he slid into a sort of sexual um, zone. Guys, guys do it. They they go into their comfort zone sexually, and that's it. They just uh, they're not willing to change. It's easy for them. They got uh, something easy, something regular, and that's it. And you're angry at him, and he's not listening to you, and he's not respecting you. You're frustrated. I'm just so you surprised be. that you're 18, that you, you, you're even having this conversation. I mean, I didn't even know to ask for anything until I was at least, I don't know, 25. Yeah. <laughs> good and for you that you're asking for stuff. Yeah, good for you. Bad for him. Hey, uh, Caitlin? So you're saying there's no solution? Unless no, here, here's, here's what we're saying. Uh, don't come at him with the whiny voice. Come <laughs> at him with the adult voice. Don't go, give him the, uh, see, see the difference between the, hey, and the, uh, see what I'm saying? I did tell him, I said, look it, watch me. And he said, no, I don't want to. That doesn't turn me on. Wow. Like well, you're freaking thing. him out. You, you, you may, yeah. your, your sexuality may be overtaking him. Oh, how old Kayla is he? Too. He's nine. <laughs> How old? How old is he, Caitlin? He's eighteen. He's, he's eighteen. Wow. He's a little freaked out. Look, Caitlin, tell him forget about sex. We need to communicate. Uh, you need to meet my needs. I need to meet your needs. And if that's not going to happen, then we need to break up. But I yeah, can't break up with him. We're engaged. What? But you can break up with him. But God forbid you should get married to this guy. Come on. Yeah. And, and you're, by, just, you're nineteen anyway. You've seen the data on nineteen-year-old marriages. It's like one out of a thousand. 18. 18 Hold years, on. impossible. How old is this guy? Life is He's 18. Not perfect. I have to break up with him? No. No, it's because he won't respond to you. He doesn't care about you. He's oh, showing listen, something about himself. Stop arguing before. both sides of the point, by the way. A second yeah. ago, he was an idiot who wasn't listening to you, and now because everything's not perfect, you have to break up with him. He's, he's not listening to you. Or just stay with him. Who cares? Just don't get pregnant, all right? Hold on. She's 18. He's 18. She's sexually active. Uh, they're engaged. She's from Iowa. Jew. Yes? <laughs> Am I right? I'm never wrong. You Are you Jewish, Caitlin? No, we're not Jewish. No, oh. they're not. They're not because they're having a lot of oral sex. I, uh, I, I, you know, Drew, I, have I ever been wrong? <laughs> no, not on this. Well, you wow. couldn't be right. She wow. must be mistaken. Wow. Boy, I got to recalibrate my whole uh, Judometer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Caitlin, don't get pregnant. And by the way, Yes, you can get you can break up even though you're engaged because when you get engaged at seventeen and a half, you just made it's it's you're made to break up. That's what you're supposed to do. Of course, you're not That's supposed you, uh. to get married when you when you get engaged at seventeen and change. It's uh. easy to do. Is this your first boyfriend? No, uh, hold on a second. Oh, put her on hold, Caitlin. Yeah. First boyfriend? No. Okay. Wow. You got that little girl voice. Yeah, there's a lot me. going on with Caitlin, Adam. A lot. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. Jello, please. Yeah. You're, uh, is your dad around, Caitlin? No, he's not. Well, I mean, he's around, but I'm not living close to them anymore. I moved What'd he do to you? Why? Is he abusive? No. My dad's why'd you, great. Why'd you move out so early? Because I didn't want to live at home anymore. Oh, uh, okay. True, right moved out, Adam, because you moved out. <laughs> I say no show gets more of those answers than. Uh, yeah. Uh, first, first off, I moved out. I moved away. I moved out young. Why? <laughs> Why well, is your dad a problem? No, my dad's great. Why'd you move out so young? Because I moved out. <laughs> Something's going on. You don't. Know, chicks don't move out at eighteen. And they, well, then what is it? Is your mom a pain in the ass? Something. Caitlin, what's wrong? Your mom's a pain. Yeah, sometimes. Okay. And really, why uh, did you move out so young? I didn't want to live with my mom anymore. I what was she? What's up with her? Everything. Well, she is very demanding. She's unappreciative. Mm -hmm. No, there's something more. Mm -hmm. All right. Alcoholic? No, she's not. But for, okay. She owns her own business. Since I have been in eighth grade, I have ran half of the business, and I have gotten 20% of the profits. Mm -hmm. She has never acknowledged when I did something right, but every time I did something wrong, she was all over it. Like, what kind of what business? What are you doing? You got 20% so you got 20% of the business though. So. Yeah, but I ran 100% of it. Mhm. Mm what kind of business? Um a dog boarding business. Oh, lesbian. All right, Caitlin. Uh you you, you 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 when you talk about your mom, you sound like you're talking about your boyfriend, by the way. 
Yeah. Um, you're very uh, d dissatisfied. Uh, I don't blame you. Maybe your boyfriend's bad. Maybe your mom's bad. Maybe that's uh, just your point of view. I don't know. Don't get pregnant. Don't get married. Slow down. I know you've been working since you were young and responsible and all that stuff. Slow down. You're 18. No reason to do anything yet. You re you couldn't go wrong by slowing down, everybody. Right. Right. All right. Speaking of slowing down, let's stop this show, Drew. Let's Please. grind it to a halt. Bonnie Somerville is uh, here tonight. Bonnie is uh, one of the newer cast members, or maybe the newest cast member. On, uh, thank you. Thank you. NYPD Blue. Yes. Even though she just showed up, she's the main reason it's been such a success over the last uh, 12 years. That's the way I look at it. Right. That's what her publicist told me to say. Tuesday nights, 10 o'clock on uh, ABC. Also, uh, without a paddle, $55 million. Thank you very much. Take a quick break. Be right back after this. Thank you for calling Loveline. Your call will be answered in the order it seems interesting. Call Loveline. Call Loveline. Call Loveline. Love one nine one. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. All the way in Syracuse, everybody. Bonnie yep. Somerville is here tonight. She is from NYP. D. Blue. ABC. 10 o'clock. Tuesday nights and uh, also uh, out in theaters when, uh, without a paddle. Which uh, had our uh, good friend uh, Seth Green in here uh, talking about that. And uh, what's his nose and what's his nose too. All right. I can't remember the other guy's name. Dax. That's right. Well, it's not an everyday Dax name. Dax and Matthew. Oh, yeah. Matthew uh, Lillard, Lillard came in here. Yeah. And Dax, it's like, well, you know, it's hard to remember Dax. It's not like, oh, yeah, I grew up. I had a neighbor Dax, and I was Uncle Dax. And Dax. Was, uh, Dax's Five and Dime store. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know any Dax. Dax's pizza. Right. Yeah, you didn't know any Dax. Nothing named. You didn't have no, no pet named after Dax. All right. Ready to rock here, Drew? Here we go. <laughs> you sure we're going? Here we're going. <laughs> Michelle? Yes. You're 24? Yes. What is up? Um, I have a question regarding anal sex. Mm-hmm. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I've been seeing this guy probably for the past maybe eight or nine months, and he really enjoys it. Mm-hmm. And I do, too, somewhat, but he is um, quite big. Mm. And I've heard pros and cons about it, and um, when we do have it, I don't tend to bleed all the time, but I do, mm -hmm. probably like half the time. And what's I've heard the, uh, that. Hold on, what's the pro part of anal? I'm going right. to write this down. Yeah, put it, uh, laminate it, put it in my wallet. The pros. Give me the, uh, give me the yeah, give me the broad strokes on the pros of anal. With so the, you heard uh, pros penis. and cons. Yeah. yeah, heard pros and cons. My pros and cons. Yeah, let's, oh. let's hear yours. My, I, my pro is that I enjoy it. All right, enjoyment. <laughs> the right. con, I guess, would be that sometimes I bleed. Okay. And also, yeah. All right, sometimes you bleed. All right. Think about the con. But I, also, they, but I yeah. also do bleed when we have regular sex from you, him. You, you ble bleed from the vagina, not from the anus. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. But and, uh, the thing about the cons... Jesus bleeds as a small tear of blood comes from the baby Jesus. Yes, in, yes. In the nativity. During regular sex or anal? No, that's anal. Right. Regular he's cool. <laughs> you know, as far as I know. <laughs> yeah, what, what about it, Drew? Uh, the thing about the cons on the anal sex is that they keep on accumulating over time. Because as you get older, that whole area can prolapse and it can scar and get mm -hmm. hemorrhoids and fistulas. Mm -hmm. It just can be a mess. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that you're bleeding from it means you're traumatizing the area, and it can really head to a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. So I, you enjoy, it's actually something that, does it bring you to orgasm when you're doing that? It actually does, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. wow. Passionate woman. <laughs> uh, okay, Be careful. So, uh, try, try to avoid the activity that causes the bleeding. I mean, take it easy. Well, uh, how big is his uh, pecker, by the way? How... Um well, I haven't actually measured it, but I would say it's it's more than it's probably more than eight inches. I am wow. a big boy. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, wow. I, I have done it prior mm -hmm. to that with other people, but they haven't mm -hmm. like they haven't really gone all the way in, and mm -hmm. I've never bled from it. But they, but he, I think it's just because he's 
bigger. Yeah. Big man. Yeah. Makes it a and tougher sell. See, for me, it's kind of like, huh, all right. Are you in yet? I, I have heard, I, what I've right, heard I'm about done. it is that Thank if you, you do that, you're not supposed to, you're not, the, he's not supposed to go in all the way. Mm -hmm. That could be dangerous, and he does, and I don't know mm -hmm. if that's the reason why I bleed. No. Mm -hmm. The well, going in all the way part is probably not yeah. as big a deal as just the overall behavior. Going in. Yeah. Yeah, the going in at all. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, it's a bad so, combo. It, yeah. it really is the uh, the guy with the big dork who's uh, bent on anal. It's really it's like it's the it's like the crazy college student with the hunting rifle. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a, a no win. It's bad. Someone's going to get hurt. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, keep on keeping on and uh, speak to uh, Vanessa. Vanessa. Hello. Twenty one. What's up? Um. Well, let's see. I moved back home a year ago. Um. Mm -hmm. And, you know, things are going cool. Like, everything's going really good with my family and stuff. Um, I have a history with uh, women in the past, relationships. Mm -hmm. And um, now I'm kind of like, you know, gotten over that quote-unquote phase in my life and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so my parents are happy. They were never too happy, you know, when I was in those relationships. But just recently I met someone, a girl, who I'm actually really interested in. And so now I'm kind of torn between this, you know, everything being good with my family again and, you know, meeting this really awesome person that, you know, something might, good might happen from it. So, yeah. Well, what, what are you going to do? I mean, I mean you're, you're going you're to adjust your, your social life to what sort of satisfies your family? Well, yeah. yeah it doesn't I mean, make much I, sense. I, I practically did. I mean, my family is, like, really important to me. Like, we've been close, like... Yeah, but you know, you're, you're, you're into chicks, right? Well, I'm sort of equally into guys but i oh, you, are. you know have had better luck with women as far as like emotionally and you know how how do you get so sort of spun about this how do you get so confused about your identity i think if my parents were okay with it i would probably be okay with living that life mm -hmm. but you know i'm sort of you know they're christians mm -hmm. you know so <laughs> and um so it sort of puts me in a spot, you know, because it's either like have this lifestyle and not my family or have my family and not this lifestyle. Well, well you keep calling it a lifestyle. It, it, it's just how you're, you're configured. You're, you're wired. Were, were you sexually abused growing up or something? Um, yeah, when I was little. Yeah, well, that, no, that's, no, that doesn't that, count. No. no, forget that then. No. But no. that's where these, all this sexual orientation confusion comes from, and that's oh, not yeah. something well, you... I'm, Growing up, my birth mother was, you know, a complete slut, and uh -oh, <laughs> seeing that mother. growing up, you know, I think that kind of, like, put that mentality in my head that, like, I want to be the opposite of her. Well, look, you were sexually abused, and when women are sexually abused, it's very common for them to have all kinds of, uh, all kinds of issues about their sexual orientation develop who, with sexual who abuse. Who sexually abused you? Um, it was a friend of the family, actually. Like, was, like, your, your current family? Um, no, my birth mother's family. How old were you when you were adopted by this family? Um... Well, my, I live with my dad, and um, my stepmom raised me, though. So I'm, I moved in with my dad when I was about seven. I see. Okay, well, look, if you want to do something to kind of get some clarity about this, get some therapy and decide well, what, who it is you are, right what you now. are. What? I'm going right now, actually. I just started. All right, well, good. And that, that's what you need to do because you're, you're trying to make decisions that are really important about who you are and what your sources of attraction are based on your family's wishes. And it would be nice if you lived in a perfect world that that would work, but that doesn't work. Yeah. Now, you, you may end up being not so confused about who you are and your sexual orientation through therapy, and maybe it will be in such a way that it will make your family happy. Maybe it won't, but you'll be able to, better able to do it, deal with that, too. Yeah. I don't get the part where you were molested by a family friend, but you're so worried about your family. I, oh, that was my birth mother. Her and I don't speak anymore. Yeah, but where was your biological dad? He was out? He was, he was um, living 500 miles away trying to get his life back together so you know, he yeah. could provide a good life for me. Uh, I don't know. It's funny, isn't it, Adam, how women are? If, if that had been, or the sexes had been reversed, that had been a yeah. dad who was an a-hole and a mom living far away, she would have moved in with the mom at seven and never let her forget it. Yeah, I, I, mm. your dad moved 500 miles away and left you with a crazy mom. Well, he didn't know she was crazy at the time, you know? I mean... Well, he got divorced he was into, from her, didn't he? Was he? Into, you know, he was young and he was into his own things. You know, my dad, okay. he's actually my hero, so... Yeah, uh, 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 uh,
what the hell does that mean? He had a kid. Mm. He had a daughter. He abandoned his daughter. And he thought the best thing for me would be to leave me with my mother. He thought a kid should be with his mother. But later on in life, as uh, more kids yeah, but how about he? How about he hung father. out? Yeah, how about he hung on the same town? Well, yeah. he was. She she was not allowing him to you know have a normal life. You know, she was like calling him at work, following him to work. You know, and so he. Mm. Got would get fired from his jobs and did your did your dad find Jesus Christ later on in life? Um, probably a couple years after he moved away. Yeah, all right. And then I was in jail. Was he in jail at the time? No, no, no. Because that's where Jesus hangs out. Where was Jesus? I'm Jesus in the class. He started going to a church, and that's where he actually met my stepmother at church. Okay, all right. But listen, here's what goes on, and uh, um, you know, I, I don't know why, but one parent has to be the villain and the other one has to be the saint and the yeah. dad the dad's the hero the dad moved away i mean you have a young girl and you split you leave town and by the way uh you leave her with the nut job and don't right. tell me she didn't he didn't know she was a nut job she was stalking the guy absolutely getting fires calling work you're talking out of both sides of your mouth first is is you know oh, oh my dad's my hero i owe him so much so much reverence no he moved out of town and then when i said uh well why do you leave you with the nut oh he didn't know yeah of and course. Then, then the next thing you say is she was stalking him at work and he had to leave town of course, he knew better than anybody what a psycho bitch this chick was. Of course, that's why he divorced her. That's why he that's moved why 500 he, miles away. That's why he fled, and when he fled, he left you with her. Oh, but he, he thinks, a, he thinks a, a daughter should be with the mother, even though the mother's psychotic. And uh, he also, oh, well, he was still young. He was still fine in himself. Stop giving this guy such a such a break. Yeah, maybe he's right. got his stuff together. Maybe he's a decent guy. Maybe he remarried and all that kind of stuff. You don't owe him as much as you think you do. You The reason you like chicks is because he left you with Psycho Mom and you got molested. Yep. Ooh. But, you know, she, that's not, may not go away. That may hold be on, just the way on, she is. Hold Drew, hold on. Yeah. <sighs> that's heavy. Take a breath. Let's, let's take a breath. <sighs> you want some water? Yeah, I can go for some agua. <laughs> That's Mexican for water. Drew, <laughs> don't say anything. <laughs> don't say anything. Don't say nothing, all right, buddy? Shh. We're going to take a break. We're going we're gonna to back into this break, okay? Don't mm -hmm. say anything. Drew's in Syracuse. We've got Bonnie Somerville over here. Shh. She's not in Syracuse. Quiet time. We're gonna get, bam. We're going to get a little H2O. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Line will be right back. So get your problems ready. 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 Yo, Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew over there in Syracuse. Bonnie Somerville here tonight, which basically sort of sounds like Thank a cross you again. between uh, like uh, one of James Bond's uh, secretary. And secretaries and like um, like Ron Howard's girlfriend from Happy Days. Like it has yeah. a very wholesome but slightly sexual sounding name. Yes, Drew? Strangely, that's the way her voice sounds. Yeah. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Seductive, yes. Slightly wholesome or slightly sexual? Ooh. Both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feel that, works? that was good. Bonnie and I were just having a great discussion. By the way, Bonnie on uh, NYPD Blue, Tuesday nights, 10 o'clock on uh, ABC, and currently in theaters in uh, Without a Paddle. Um, Bonnie and I were just having a lovely conversation about uh, Crank Yankers. Huh. Yes. Yeah, and how much she likes Best Crank show. Yankers. God love you, baby doll. And, and you were shocked. I knew who, what character you, you were. She knew I was Bertram. Bertram kills me. And... Uh, you know, it just uh, rem reminded me that uh, not only is uh, Crank Yankers on as we speak, but uh, secondly, I think we got a uh, season one DVD, which you is, do, which is out. Yeah, <laughs> all right, I have to She's buy. She's excited. It. Yeah. No, I'm serious. Yeah. Season one, though, that was when I when I found that when that, so someone told me about it because I, I love that they were like, you have to see this show. That I, I couldn't believe it. I just I was I thought it was the funniest thing that, I'd ever seen. That's when you fell in love with I found Crank love. Yankers. I did. God love you. And that's the kind of thing would you know, makes you more attracted to me, right? Yes. Whatever. I mean, because it factors in, yeah. You as a puppet? Yeah. Hot. I mean hot. Hot. Totally hot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
All right, let's uh, keep hey, on keeping one, on one here. Thing, it, it, it couldn't hurt tomorrow night if uh, everyone tuned into the Late Late Show for you, could it? No, no, it couldn't. Are you on? It couldn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, that hosting the uh, Late Late Show yeah. for the next uh, three nights, actually. That'd be uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of uh, this week. I'll so watch. I'll be uh, filling in. Yeah, is uh, is uh, is uh, much as uh, people don't believe it. I, I'm not a big plugger of my stuff. I'd prefer people not watch. Yes, really? Ex- oh, yeah, but uh, it would be good if they could tomorrow. And All right, so... Uh, I'll plug it for you. I'll be, uh, you know, uh, I'll be doing it uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday night, and uh, Thursday night. Who do you have? Any good guests? No, not really. Let's see. I have... Um, <laughs> I, I, I want to do it when you're hosting. We have... Uh, well, <laughs> you, might, you might be, because uh, <laughs> I... I I, I, sw- I swear to you, uh, we, I have, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Pfeiffer. Who do I have? What the hell's his name? Black actor. Uh, Mackay Pfeiffer, yeah. Okay. It's going to go going to go great tomorrow night when I say, what the hell is that black what, guy's what's, name? What's the black actor's name? Uh, Mackay Pfeiffer uh, tomorrow night, and then uh, Mark uh, Knopfler from, uh, I guess, Dire Straits is going to be on the next night. Wow. And then uh, I don't even know. And uh, Mark Knopfler, or Knopfler may be like the uh, musical guest. I don't know. It doesn't seem like they got any big bookings. You should probably... I, I'm uh, available. I'm probably going to go over there and put, it, put your name in, uh, in <laughs> My there My publicist tomorrow. is in the other room if you want to yeah? ask her. <laughs> All right. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll talk that. I'll, uh, I'll bring it up we'll, tomorrow we'll, we'll when talk. I go over there. We'll talk. We'll talk. All right. Let's uh, move ahead and speak to... Uh, Brittany, who's 16. Brittany? Hey, how you guys doing? What's up? Um, well, for the past about six months, I've been pretty confused about my um, sexual orientation, I guess. Mm-hmm. Just because I tend to be into, like, a lot older guys. At first I thought that was it, but now I'm kind of into one of my girlfriends. Mm. Which is kind of freaking me out and throwing me off a little bit. Like, I'll mm. be hanging out with her and having just kind of, you know, sexual feelings t- towards her. And I thought that I was just into older guys. But <laughs> now I'm totally confused by it, and I don't really know why. How old right. are you? She's 16. 16. Look, at 16, your feelings of intimacy and sexuality can be very, very confused. And you may just feel very close and, and the connected to your girlfriend, and that may sort of bleed into sexual kinds of feelings. It doesn't mean you have to act on them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You, you mm-hmm. can just kind of sit back and you know, just keep the boundaries clear. I imagine you were, what, abandoned or something growing up? What, what happened? Okay. Well, when I was growing up, my mom, I think, might have done a little bit of weird stuff to me. Because, not not sexually, but um, she was just really, she, used to, she cheated on my dad a lot and took me with her all the time. Like, she Ugh. was very slutty, oh. and I had to go yeah. to all the boyfriend's houses every day. Oh. And, well, I had to come home to my dad. And then the abandonment thing, she moved away a year ago wow. with, my, with my parents. So she kind of, I think that kind of, from, from what my parents, what I saw, confused me a lot. Yeah, well, what, okay. uh, yeah your, your mom sounds like a, like a severe drug addict yeah. or alcoholic. Uh, well, she, she's bipolar. A bipolar and yep. she's an That's alcoholic. It. True knows. Wow, well, you both, uh, both of you. Thank you very good much. Work. Thank you. Uh, good we're work, all individuals, boys. though. We can never tell. Cannot never judge. Tell. Everyone's Can't different. Predict. Everyone's, Everyone's out. different. Everyone's unique. different. Everyone's different. All unique. We're predict. all God's unique creatures. They broke the mold after each, each and every one, one of us. Each and every one. Ready. Every one of us. Wow. Nothing in common. Nothing in common. Couldn't tell. All right. So, uh, Brittany, uh, this is a mess. And, uh, of course, you're just like uh, the last caller we had. Your your sexual compass is uh, spinning around spinning. like it's in the devil's triangle. Oh, t- nice reference. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Drew misses the devil's triangle. Dude. By the way, uh, you know, growing up in the 70s, I thought there was a 50 to 70 percent chance I would be taken by the devil's triangle. You yeah, did? forget I nu- nuclear up, holocaust was not an issue. It was the devil. Was I was watching. I, I when I grew up, it was everything had to do with the devil's triangle and the devil. And I just figured, uh, one of these days, I'm going to be you know flying into Bermuda or on a, a barge, and uh, that's it. Yeah, swallowed up by the devil's triangle, which mysteriously seems to have gone away now. By the nobody way, nobody talks about it. Gone. And, and, and you know not, what? They, they killed it. They used it to death. Not only, yeah, they worked it. They worked it too much. And, and not, not only that, I know it was like some, some land that had been farmed too aggressively, <laughs> and now the soil is barren. Yes, Drew? Yes, Adam, barren. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Just repeat the last word of my sentence, and we'll be fine. Fine. There you go. 
Okay. You guys are like a real relationship. Oh, yeah. We're tight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Brittany's a mess. Brittany needs therapy. Brittany's mom's a mess. Or at least uh, Brittany, Brittany needs to cool out. Brittany's smart. Act Brittany's to not act out. Right. Yeah. But as Drew was saying, uh, a woman can have intimate feelings. Like she can, she can feel close to somebody and can begin to feel sexual toward that person, even if it's uh, the same sex. Yeah. Yeah. Bonnie, anything? Nothing? Well, that's not usually... not the same sex, Adam. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. We're almost the same sex. Are we? And we're close. We're close, yeah. Well, I... We could meet in the middle. We could meet in the middle. All right. Uh, Drew? She was begging to be on Killborn. I mean, late, late with you. <laughs> begging? No, I think they're still calling it Killborn. <laughs> I'm think, just I'm just offering up my services. No, I I listen. don't want to leave them hanging. I'm gonna go in there tomorrow morning, and I will bring you up because uh, <laughs> I think I, you should say why isn't I don't, Bonnie Summerall on the show? That's the question. Why isn't she? I don't know that they have guests. I I, I really don't. I mean, they have a guest for tomorrow night, and then after that, uh, no, they have guests. Uh, no, they're supposed to have guests, but uh, I've not. Uh, Maybe not for you. Not for me. That's what huh. I'm saying. All right. Drew uh, over there in uh, Syracuse. Uh, Bonnie Somerville here with me in uh, Los Angeles. We'll take a, a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Okay, so I know there's nothing wrong with me. So what's up? So I was like you, and I used to think that these Datelines were totally cheesy. Why can't I meet anybody? But I tried everything else and thought, what the hell? So I called the Dateline and actually met a cool guy. And I called the Dateline and I hooked up with some cool people. Believe it or not, other normal people are out there looking too. 877-889-DATE. 1-800-LOVE-191. This hour brought to you in part by Axe. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew in Syracuse. Yeah. And, uh, as I recall, so that's uh, upstate New York, right, Drew? Mm, we're kind of smack dab in the middle of New York, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the middle of the state. But then uh, where's Manhattan? That, that's closer. New York City's closer, right? Closer to what? Closer uh, LA. to what? L.A. No. No? Uh -uh. You get to Syracuse? I thought, uh, well, what is it? You can't fly directly into Syracuse? No, you can't. We're, we're, it's closer to the Great Lakes, though. Oh, it is? Yeah. All right, so it's actually physically closer to L.A., Syracuse is. It's, than, it's a uh, little bit further north, but a little also a bit, quite a bit further west. Mm hmm. I'm going to have to look that up. Get the map on there, uh, Engineer Chris. Chop, chop. Uh, Bonnie Somerville is uh, here tonight. She knows Syracuse. She grew up in uh, New York somewhere, yes. right? Brooklyn, yeah. Brooklyn, very far away from Syracuse, but... You know the area. I did drive around there looking at schools once. Oh, you did? And yeah. you went to uh, Boston University? College. Or Boston College. College. Oh, is that one worse than the university? No, that one's better. No, it's better. Much oh. better. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Drew. Well, one just has the word university, and it sounds la-di-da. You know what I'm saying? Well, but, universities, yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. College. I mean, college, it means the teachers are committed to teaching undergraduate students. That's what's better. That's college right. is better than university. It's well, a very hard school to get into, I'd like yeah, to add. Really? For the most part. For the most part. Oh, true. No, no, for the, for, no, for the most part. Drew. No, 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 no. I was still back at the college statement. For the most part, colleges oh. are, are oh, a little better. Because, yeah. I see. So Boston College, not an easy school to get into. It's actually, now, I, I, I mean, I've obviously been gone a long time, but now it's it's one of the best schools in the country. I mean, it's it's really difficult to get in. Are those the uh, Golden Eagles? Yes. Yeah. The Eagles. Go yeah. Eagles. Yeah. They're golden, though, right? Like I, like I ever went to one athletic yeah. event, but go yeah. Eagles. Yeah. What'd you do? You just walked around. You were just busy being hot, right? Well, it does take a lot of time. Especially. <laughs> it does. It, it does. takes a lot of effort. No, you got to put the Vaseline it's on your It's like, teeth. you know, the thing with the face and the thing and the hair. Yeah. No, it's work. Yeah, it's work. Oh, okay. So you were you're like what? You were like a no, thespian over there? I was a theater major. Oh, yeah. 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 I okay. wasn't really running around with the uh, the jocks that much. Anybody uh, other than you uh, find any success out of your class, out of your group? You know, Chris O'Donnell went to Boston College. He graduated two years before me. Mm-hmm. 
So Remember him? Did, yeah, sure. Batman or Robin Batman. or Boy Robin. Wonder. <laughs> Robin. What? Boy Whoever Wonder. Was. Yeah, Robin and Boy Wonder, same guy. By the way, does he need two names? <laughs> I mean, uh, it could just be Robin, right? Like, I think it was Robin and Boy Wonder, right? Yes. Is Robin just, the Boy Wonder. Eh, how about just Robin? But what is yeah. Batman? Yeah, Batman's just Batman. The Man not, Wonder? Yeah, it's not like Batman and, and the Great Guy. No. It's just Batman. <laughs> Batman the Great Guy. Think about it, Drew. Yeah, you're it's right. It's heavy. It's heavy. All right, let's talk to uh, Ashley, who's been on hold for uh, a whopping 80 minutes. <gasps> Ashley? Yes? You're 14? Yeah. What's up, baby doll? I was just wondering if it's normal when you're doing high amounts of meth to, like, have hallucinations. Uh, uh, just amphetamine you're doing? Uh, yeah. Well, by the time you're getting hallucinations, that, that usually comes very, very late in the game. Uh, first, oh, really? you get yeah. You, first, you get paranoid, and you start thinking people are talking about you, and your family is plotting things against you. And eventually, you will see things. My, my favorite amphetamine hallucination story is actually Todd Bridges. Remember him? Yeah, child actor. Backs alive. Yeah, yeah. He no, did wait enough. A he, uh, well, I, it may have appeared on that show, but uh, <laughs> what? What one the of hell those. was he on? Huh? One, one of those. I don't know. I different can't different strokes. strokes. Different strokes. Yeah. And he did enough speed that he, 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 he... I said it before you. I just screwed it up. He became Sorry. acutely paranoid, and then mm -hmm. he began believing his grandmother was trying to kill him. Then he believed that the grandmother had raised his house up six inches and built a factory to produce little green men that he kept seeing running across the floor in his bedroom. That was and a then great episode. And then he started shooting at them. <laughs> Then he started Better firing episode. at them with a That was with when they gun. jumped the shark. Wow. And that was when he got arrested because he was running down the street shooting at the green man. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can have hallucinations late in the game with speed. It's bad, bad That's times. And it usually is a sign of brain damage, too, because Ooh. speed does cause free radicals to destroy brain cells. Ashley. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you're only 14. Yeah. How long have you been doing the speed? Um, only speed only about a year, but I started doing like inhalants when I was like ten, mm -hmm. and then I graduated uh, to like other drugs. Mm -hmm. Well, well, uh, here's the whole thing: you got to stop uh, kicking the ass out of your brain. See, so you, you need it for later. You know what I mean? Yeah. Driving, simple math, things like that. Uh, can you get yourself some help? I've been to rehab twice. All right. Well, well you may need to spend it. You, you need to spend, uh, believe it or not, twelve to twenty-four months somewhere. You're gonna. You are not gonna live through this condition, and certainly not gonna live into adulthood in any kind of condition, unless you do something about this. You Where do you get the, the money for the meth? By the way, oh, I couldn't I'm buy a goddamn soft taco when I was 14. I didn't have yeah. the money. Yeah. Where do you get it? But isn't meth a, a cheap? A pretty job? cheap, yeah. Yeah, it's but pretty cheap. still, she's 14. What are you doing, Ashley? <laughs> the guys just give it to me for free usually. Oh yeah. Why? Not about that mm. part. Yeah, why? Nothing's for free. Why? That's right. I don't know. They just do. And my dad bought a bottle of diet pills, and I like went through it in like a week. Uh hmm. All right. Uh, is is your parents uh, trying? Are they aware of uh, the problem? I know you've been through rehab, but do they know how bad it is? No, they think I've been off of it for like six months now. Oh, okay. Uh, well, whoever uh, was treating you at the, at the uh, treatment center, get back with them, please, please, please. Okay. This is okay. this is a bad situation. This is bad. Yeah, Ashley. I mean, here here's the problem too. Um, I know you're not so worried about the, you know next month or next year, but where do you go ultimately? You're 14. You know what I mean? What, where where are you going to be at 16? I'll tell you where you're going to be. Drew, tell her where she's going to be at 16. Where's she going to be, Adam? Tell her. She's going to be dead or in jail. There you or, go. Or both. Dead in jail. That's right. Which is worse? That's right. That's what those mausoleums are. <laughs> they're, they're actual cells. You guys didn't know that, did you? They keep you in there. Oh, you can't get out. No bologna sandwiches in there. That's right. So, Ashley, get yourself some help, please. You know what you're doing. You're called for a reason, right? Yeah, I guess. All right. Let's take care of you, would you? Please? Don't do that. Don't please. do that, Ashley. It's just, it's just uh, there's no... There, see, I, I understand, like... In a way, I understand, like, people who gamble. Because it's like... Yeah, I know you're telling me I'm going to lose, and I know I always end up losing. But you know what? I could hit some. Right. Uh, p I could pick ten of the right football teams this yes. week. Hit a, hit an exact. Uh, you know, I could. There, something good could come of this. The thing about like math, 
what your your chances of uh, having anything work out are are really just zero. Yeah, it's your just, luck is yeah. not going to change. Absolutely no, zero. On a yes, true. you you just start picking your skin. You get thrown out of school. You get, you get paranoid. And... It just turns into a mess. Yep. So uh, there's uh, I understand. Like I said, you know, one in ten chance uh, you may hit. Fine, I understand that sort of uh, blind. Uh, pursuing of those dreams but this is zero upon zero upon zero all right let's see i'm just going to talk to whoever's been on the hold the longest wow and, uh, 80 minutes yeah. who's been on hold the 80 minutes uh that was ashley and then we got 69 minutes uh over here with uh tamar tamar yeah you're 25 yes what's up um well, I'm 25. I've been married to my wife for over a year now. Mm -hmm. um, we we got together back in 99. Mm -hmm. And um, in 2000, she got into a car accident, and um, she contracted RSD as a result. Uh -oh. Drew, what is that? It's a reflex sympathetic dystrophy syndrome, yeah. which, which is a pain in a limb usually towards the, 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 the periphery of the limb. Hold on. Sometimes, Drew, what, Drew what? hold on. Are you a real doctor or just a love doctor? How dare you? All right, so she's got the uh, RFD? Yes. <laughs> RSD. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one, the other one was where Mayberry took place, right? The other was BFD, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone I know seems to have BFD disorder, <laughs> especially when I start talking. Uh, all right, so she has that. So is that bad, Drew? Well, it's chronic pain syndrome. Is she on pain meds? Um, yes and no. Um, like recently I just got insurance, so like, um, she hasn't been able to get them before and she's been off of them for so long that, you know, she's just used to being off of them. Good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, well, I guess because she's been just, you know, constantly, you know, complaining about how this hurts, this hurts, this hurts, and yeah. you know, she won't do anything about it. You know, she's one of those type of people that's really strong-willed. and she that, That's also good, but what's the question? I mean, there's, there's, there's a huge, very complex topic here, RSD, so what, what are we right. going to get at? Well, okay, like I said, she got RSD in 2000. It's yeah. now 2004. Yeah. Um, she and I, I can, I can literally count on two hands with fingers left over the number of times she and I have attempted to have sex, you know, throughout that time frame. Mm -hmm. And it's gotten to the point where I feel that, um, you know, I just don't want to be attracted to her anymore because she's Maybe. a very attractive woman. It's just I don't want to be because, like, I'm driving myself crazy. It's, it's too so painful. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get rejected too much. Yeah, you know, exactly. That... And then, you know, it's like I'm starting to feel guilty because, you know, like the last couple of times, you know, she just kind of like, you know, like laid on the bed like this, like cadaver, you know, mm. and it's like oh. necrophilia yeah. is not my thing. She's right. not doing any drugs. It's huh? also illegal now. So <laughs> Yeah. She's not on drugs well, He's calling from Delaware. So yeah. Well, yeah, you can get, do it. get your kicks before the uh, S house burns down. But uh, here, we've ha I've had to seriously curtail yeah, me too. my lifestyle. Uh, me too. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have to see, Yeah, they made I have to rethink everything. They made necrophilia illegal. First thing I had to do is clean out my trunk. Absolutely. That's number one. And hose it down. Uh, number two. <laughs> All right. Oh, All right. So, uh, Tamar, I, uh, I feel bad. She, uh, she, and I know you want Drew to answer, but first off, it seems like she could probably use a little therapy on top of everything. Well, this, this is, she is a complicated case. I, I promise you there's a lot more going on here. Oh, it is. Yeah. And there's the RSD, yeah, right. And magically, as with the all chronic pain syndromes, there's a very high incidence of sexual abuse and physical abuse in childhood. Really? Oh, yeah. And, and, oh, yeah. And, and wow. I feel very strongly that's, that, you know, the character logic use of pain, the addictive process in pain, and the yeah. whole wiring mechanism during development in the face of trauma affects the way the body tells its tale of woe. When she's upset, when she's miserable, it becomes uh, expressed as pain. So a anytime really, you put the word syndrome at the end of something, it yeah. always means the person didn't start off with the hardiest hand dealt right. to them. You know, <laughs> when true. you show me a person that has something, something, something syndrome, uh, I'll show you a person who was in foster care, was sexually abused, was verbally or physically abused, did something to open up cracks to let this uh, syndrome, as I do my quotations, in. And uh, He's doing bunny ears, folks. I'm doing the bunny ear yeah, I syndrome. And here's, I don't know much about her syndrome. but Yeah, here's the thing about it, is that because it is in the periphery of a limb, 
there are lots of um, mechanical interventions. There's stimulators and nerve blocks, Adam, like the kind you had, basically. Uh, uh, sympathetic nerve blocks. Oh, yeah. Looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah, we right. had that one. So All there right. are things to be done. In addition, these, these require multiple disciplines intervening on her behalf, and, and it's, it's a long-term proposition. Okay, so here's the thing. If you guys are going to be married and sh you're going to continue to be married, uh, even though she's suffering from the syndrome, she's going to have to make some effort, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. And, and, and if she's not and she doesn't, I think you're perfectly reasonable to uh, move on. It's just yeah, sad that you have so. to you have to live like that without having yeah, she, any intimacy at all. I mean, all mm. You're 25. Also, she she needs to focus on the uh, abuse of the past and stop oh, relying course. on the syndrome du jour of right. uh, today. Yes, That's right. Yes, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Bonnie, yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay, Stacy. Yes. yes. There you go. 24. Yes. What's up? Uh, my fiance just got circumcised today. Mm-hmm. Mazel tov. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's Hindu, but he's a nine-day-old. He's a nine-day-old Jew. He's yes. Hindu. It was a bris. He's Hindu. He's Hindu. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was had a couple of questions. Um, mm hmm Well, I want to know like things like healing time because every time I ask him, he's like, I, he tells me, you know, six weeks, whatever. And we we have a question first. Why did he get that done? Uh, I caused an injury uh, about a year and a half ago, and since then he's been having wow. infections, getting antibiotics. The infection comes back, infection comes back. Wow. What, pray tell, did, did you do? Garden shears. <laughs> she went after. Um, you know, what, sexual injury. Yeah. I was a little too rough and tore it. <laughs> wow. But it was his fault. He's the one telling me harder. Yeah. A woman of exquisite passion, Drew. Extreme passion. Extreme. Yeah. Well, that is wow. one of the complications of having a foreskin is that they can tear, and once they tear, they sort of stenose down, they narrow, and then every time the head of the penis comes out, it narrows, it tears, and then narrows more. And, yeah, that's a good reason to get it. And, and you want to know how long he's going to be out of commission? Well, yeah, there's that. I'd like to know if there are any uh, psychological things I'm going to have to deal with with him. No, 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 no. Stay no, fine. You're scaring us. Okay. You're really so scaring us. I don't have to worry us. about him suddenly going limp when he looks down and sees he's got a turtleneck now. No. Great. But it's so much cuter. I agree. I mean, it's... Yeah, well, is there, wait, now, really, is there wait anything that can make a penis cute? Uh, a little yes. turtleneck? Yeah. Maybe a, a hat? A bow tie. Maybe a coat? Bowler? Maybe that thing with the Sharpies. Some socks? And the uh, stick-on eyeballs that have... <laughs> uh, well, actually, the, the eyeballs themselves swing around. It, it's all right. Okay. It's all right. Maybe a mustache? <laughs> the, the, all right. uh, <laughs> The balls, there's nothing you can do about it. No. There's oh. nothing. Well, you can oh. put some teeny Humanity. tiny shoes on them. The Humanity. No. Oh, my God. It's worse. Is, uh, oh, there, my God. There's not enough, not enough elbow macaroni glue <laughs> and gold spray paint in the world. No. Like, uh, said not at look all. Good. Not they're, at all. They're a disaster. Oh, my that God. That is a disaster. And, uh, you, you know, I would ask that uh, you not look at my balls. When are I you won't. asking her? When, <laughs> when Adam? When I'm is that going to happen? No, You're I'm asking not, me not to. No, I'm not saying that right now. No, I'm putting. If you that. take them out, I will not look at them. Thank you. They're okay. out. Oh, see, is there I'm, not I'm not it's looking. It's Mr. Elastic Squirt. It's for impossible. Five minutes. <laughs> they fill the room. It's impossible. Is that what that was? That's what it is. That's they, right. No, Adam. Yes, Drew. Come on. They're not out, Drew. Please. But I mean, They're the gravity out. gravity has affected your scrotum. Yes, and not in a good way. No, I got to be honest. But they never. I it never. They're, they never were attractive. And that's yeah, what I'm now, saying. Now you're Mr. All right. Come on. Mr. Elastic Scrotum. How old are you? What's going on? Good. Are you a doctor or are you a pornographer? Relax. Silence yourself. How dare you speak of my scrotum this way? The love doctor. <laughs> Stacy is uh, frightening me because first she broke. <laughs> she ripped the force. She in. broke the guy's penis. And then secondly, she wants to know when it's going to get off the uh, injured reserve. Because she wants to get back in her. And then is it going to be 100%? And is it going to perform up to her satisfaction? She wants yeah. it now, damn it. Uh, yeah, what is up? I mean, uh, first off, your guy's just had a procedure. And I, uh, you know, it's easy enough to laugh about because ah, he's 25, he had a circumcision. Uh, I, this is probably a pretty bad day for him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. This is a, a, at least a uh, bad trip to the dentist. At least. How about at a least. little sympathy? Stacy? He's had all the sympathy he's going to get from me because he's been bitching about this. All right. Wow. Bad times. Ooh. Wow. 
She's violent. Oh, yeah. No, you know, the part I like, too, is like, look, you guys don't seem like you like each other. Much oh, no, we love each other deeply. That's the part I like. <laughs> we're engaged. <laughs> Stacy. Yeah, we can't break up. We're engaged. Yes, Stacy, where's your dad? My dad is currently a my time. He is probably sleeping next to my mom, where he's been for the last 25 years. Yeah. God, do I hate you, Stacy. What are you so angry about? What, wow. makes you, what you, made you so bitchy? Not even one what laugh. Ha- what happened I to you? I think it's her bad phone line that pisses um, her off. It's, in all honesty, this has just been a really long-standing issue with us because we're constantly arguing about it. I tell him to go to the doctor. He doesn't listen to me. He finally listens to me. And all right, but now I'm more, I'm more interested in what, why, why you're so angry and why your phone line's so bad, yeah. Well, my all phone right. line, well, it's, it's a pay phone, so. All right. Oh. Wow! Wow, you were holding for. Is anyone? She was. How I know she's only on hold for thirty-seven minutes. Oh, only thirty-seven minutes at a payphone. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know people. I thought you had. To, I thought that payphones were only for. Do they drug. still make those? No, they, it, it, they're marked clearly only for drug transactions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't even know. Only for drugs transactions or when you get arrested. Yeah, who uses a pay? Once in a while, you have to beat a guy with the receiver. But uh, other than that, I don't even know what they're good for anymore. They still make those. Yeah. All right, Stacy, you're angry. And uh, I know you have history with this guy. And I don't know what's going on with Stacy other than she's angry. I feel it. And Drew, you oh feel it. And oh, something is going yeah. on. And boy, do I feel sorry for this guy and his penis. Yeah. And his and his balls. And his balls too. <laughs> I feel sorry for his balls, to be honest. Uh, it's true. Penis and balls. Put that on a loop, please, Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's talk to uh, Tony, who's uh, twenty six. Tony. Hello. Oh, Tony, mm-hmm. calling from Riverside. Oh. Oh, oh. Not a lot of nice, nice color in the trees out there, huh? Oh, Riverside, Syracuse, all the same this same. time of year. Yeah. What's up, Tony? Yeah, I just wanted to call and uh, I just wanted to ask him. Well, me and my wife, we had a problem. Mm-hmm. She cheated on me. Mm-hmm. And uh, and now that, that we're back together and everything's all cool, mm-hmm. um, um, I want to make, you know, have good sex. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm coming mm-hmm. too quick. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to see if there's anything that uh, could fix the problem. Mm. Hey, did you uh, now? Did you forgive her for cheating? Uh, yes, I did. And why did she cheat? Um, I don't know why she cheated. She said that I wasn't romantic enough with her, and Uh-oh. and that I wasn't paying attention to her needs. Mm. Right. Isn't that that's not the story? The that's way it works. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's still not going to make me pay attention to my wife's needs, by the way. Actually, that's going to make you pay less attention. Yeah. Now I'm going to compensate in the other direction. Uh, hey, uh, Tony, and do you guys have kids? Yes, we have a daughter. You have a daughter. All right. And um, your your wife, is she, is she okay? I worry a little about her. Um, What do you mean by okay? Well, I don't know. Her background. Was she abused? Uh, no. Not okay. That she just thought it was a good idea to cheat on her mm, sort of a newly wed uh, husband. Although I don't know when you guys got married. How, how, how long have you married? been? Yeah, one year. One oh. year. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty early cheating. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But cheating is the symptom, right, Drew? Is that true? Well, women cheating cheat. is a symptom of a problem. Well, but cheating women cheat when men exactly what she told them when men are not uh, getting the emotional needs met when they're not available for the relationship. That's when yeah. women cheat. Men cheat because they can. Yeah, quite literally. Because we because we think we can. Where, or yeah. But some w- some women cheat though just because they can. Nah. They're not well, those able. tend to be Once abuse survivors. Yeah, those tend to be either bipolar or abuse survivors. They they don't get that much out of cheating. It's not that satisfying to them, so they're not mm-hmm. as inclined to. Something happened when they were in Canada filming without a paddle. Oh, oh, New, Ze- oh, New Zealand. Zealand. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what Seth happened? Green mm-hmm. is actually in her now. Oh, yeah. He <laughs> actually, he actually <laughs> is standing here. You, yeah. I don't you could lose him. him. <laughs> uh, when she was walking out, the pneumatic, fell out. pneumatic door closed and hit her in the ass, and Seth yeah. fell out. He fell out <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> and he scurried away. Like, it was like He's a actually rug. under here. <laughs> he, he went under the fridge in the jock lounge, Drew. I'm going to try to coax him out with some Skittles during the break. <laughs> I didn't no. want to say anything. All right? Cue the feet nice. running. All right. Yeah, cue the feet running. That was me. <laughs> All right, here's the thing about Anderson. 
Anderson kills In the himself. studio, that was me. There's, there's, <laughs> Did you like that? I was good. Do it again. There's two people that cue, cue Anderson. Anderson and Anderson. <laughs> yeah, not, I think I have a job I'm here. I'm not a SEAL. He's not a SEAL. Oh. No. He can't be pushed around, Adam. Come on now. No, no. He only only, only puts uh, 175 drops in a, a show. You can't tell him to do 176. There, there you go. go. That's it. That's wow. the sound that's Thanks for me. having my back. Blah, 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 <laughs> Thanks for helping me with that joke. Um, so, Tony from Riverside. Here's the thing. Um, something's up with your wife cheating this early into the relationship because... Yes, you weren't attentive. Yes, you didn't you didn't cater to her needs. But six months into a, a marriage, with a kid, come on, with a with kid, a, with a kid, cheating, with a kid, wow. very uh, very bad, bad sign. Yeah, and uh, so uh, as far as your uh, premature um, ejaculation, I'll tell you what. I don't know how to add time onto it, but I can tell you. Well, you can masturbate before. You can masturbate before, but it, you want to give your wife more pleasure. Give her some oral sex. But isn't that, that also nerves, too? Because now he, yeah. he probably feels so much pressure because oh, she went out with someone else that now well, every time he's about to do it, he's, like, so nervous. Yeah. No, he's, he's angry at what he is. He's frustrated. Don't, don't, have, yeah, don't have any more kids for a little while. Make sure this uh, the dust from this uh, cheating settles. And then, again, give her some moral sex because uh, the meter in the sex cab gets uh, flipped to the right when you begin the oral. I'm yeah. on the clock. You know what That's I mean? Right, yeah. you stop, right? You, I'm you, on the clock. Do you stop in between and do that? No, I'm saying when I begin oral... That's when the sex begins. I, that's when the clock starts ticking. The credit so then, he for gets her credit or for at you? That point. For, for 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 God. For for God. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is, is that's how it goes down in the books. Okay. So what I mean is, I give you a solid 15 minutes of oral, and then five minutes of intercourse. That's a 20 minute session. You see what I'm saying? I see. That's how I count it. Hmm. And you know you have to count it that way too. <laughs> because you you said so. Because that's that's what I said. Because I yeah, they, no. I it. think I think most women and maybe not Bonnie because she may be a passionate woman like you are a passionate man, Drew. Well, most women would appreciate uh, passionate but not violent like a, the last girl. A little no, more no, oral and a little less humping. Right. Uh, and, uh, no, uh, uh, well, but oh, unless uh, oh, oh. Adam, uh, yeah. unless they're multi-orgasmic, uh -oh. in which case there the oral, you yeah, go. There oral you go. isn't so good. Wow, that's right, Drew. I you are lucky. It. You're, yeah, you're this is, good. We got to take a break, but we're coming back. Oh yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, dip myself. <laughs> I'm gonna go uh, dunk myself in the latrine and uh, try to cool my passion. Drew, oh. we're gonna come back with uh, Bonnie Somerville, and uh, I, I think you you may have met your passion match. <laughs> we'll be. Uh, <laughs> I think so. We'll be right back after this. One eight hundred love one nine one. Love line. Love line with Adam Carolla and Doctor Drew. Will be right. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew in Syracuse. Chris, you look at the map, find out if Syracuse was uh, further than uh, New York City or closer. What county is it in? Oh. <laughs> well, I have a map up here. All right, it's, it's in uh, Just, New York State. It's right in the middle of New York State. Yeah, find it. Are you right, looking at uh, California? Um, <laughs> it's in Orange County. I think he may be. Yeah, buddy. You got it. You got it. No, keep now. You're Is in Arizona. River, Riverside gotta County. Got to keep rolling, buddy. Junior College. Bonnie Somerville is uh, here tonight. Bonnie's a uh, becoming a dear, dear, dear friend of Thank the you. show. Thank you. Graduate of Boston College, by the way. Uh, Which, by now, the way, I'm looking up the uh, college ranking. She's right. It's way up there now. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not kidding. No, back you know when Bonnie went, they'd let I'm anyone smart. in. But uh, yeah, she's sharp. I'm sharp, smart. beautiful, tall, and passionate. Drew, I, Passion. I'm getting that. Thank yeah, you. It's, it's interesting. Women that have multiple orgasms don't understand why other women have difficulty having orgasms and why they would choose seriously and why they yeah. would choose to have oral sex. Like that's uh, that's all right, but it's kind of like yeah. me with oral sex, Adam. Yeah, oh, really. But I never thought. I never think of it like that. Like, eh. I mean, I, I, it never even. You know, it's not that I. Dis little oral sex. I'm not right. like dissing right, yeah, but, it. But most women can only orgasm with oral right. sex, and that's it. But I, but I have, I have said things like that in front of girlfriends, and they've said exactly what you're saying. Well, right. Bonnie, that's because yeah, you. you're multi O. You can, you know, yeah. have the O. Um, yeah, lying down and doing, oh. you know, sex. Oh man, <laughs> what a 
What a boost to my ego you would be. <laughs> you In Adam's series, he's done doing some research. <laughs> I've, I've been, like, uh, humping uh, kayaks my whole life. Like, uh, really, nothing. <laughs> Get Canoe <nothing>. shells. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. I might as be on top of a camper shell. I, I would feel better about myself. I, I get, I get nothing. I get a little fiberglass burn. That's it. <sighs> nothing. Do you know You know what it feels like for a man? I mean, I mean you know, to be uh, that, that, that sort of conquest, to give a woman an organ while you're uh, having intercourse with her, especially when it's not one of those weirdo positions and she doesn't have like five vibrators out. It really makes you feel good. I could really? only, I could well, only Adam, you, what do you mean to say is it must make you feel good? It must make one feel good. Yes. It really must. Well, it's a, it's really a public service that I'm doing. It's a, it's a duty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine what that must be like. Uh-oh. Wow. What? That was just the phone line. Like, uh, wow. God had uh, struck the phone line with lightning. Drew. Didn't hear it. Wow. Was it disturbing? I'm now going to take my headphones and, uh, or cans, as we call them in the that business. That was Jesus. And, uh, He's angry at me. Lift it up. Uh, all right. So, uh, Bonnie Somerville, NYPD Blue, ABC, 10 o'clock, Tuesday nights, multi orgasmic. And don't forget <laughs> that Adam is hosting the Late Late Show. That's right. Tomorrow. For the next three nights. Right. Yeah. Bonnie may be on for the three nights. And Crank Yanker started tonight. Yeah, Crank Yankers, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Go out and get that DVD. I'm getting it. All right. We will. Uh, I got something here that says take. So uh, I'm going to take this one. Julie? Yeah, this is Julie. 26. Hey, Adam. What's up? <laughs> yeah. Nothing. How are you doing? Good. You sound nutty. Yeah, I'm a little nutty, but, but, right. but chipper, 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 but nutty. nutty. We like that. That's all right. You can call What's it what up? you will. But basically, I was just calling um, to respond to a woman that called last night. Mm -hmm. You had a 26 year old lawyer. Mm -hmm. um, she was oh, yeah. dating her boss. Yes, mm -hmm. also a lawyer. Mm -hmm. What's that? Yeah, also a lawyer who's 40 and married. Yes. Exactly. Well, I'm calling just because I actually myself am a professional woman by day. I work as a psychotherapist. Mm -hmm. And at night, I have um, another profession. I work as a call girl. Mm -hmm. and I, I thought you were going to say superhero. Wow. Something like that. Super call girl. <laughs> what is wow. your training? What, wait, wait, no, wait a minute here. What, what is your training for psychotherapy? Yes, I see the red lights going off on, on Drew's uh, little brain what, there. What, 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 is your, <laughs> what is your training for psychotherapy? I have a master's in clinical psych. Mm -hmm. Okay, and where, what kind of clinical training have you done? What kind of... Clinical, clinical training. training. Um, I actually worked. I did many internships. I went to Marquette University in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And yeah, well, I've but I mean, I mean, in California, you need several thousand hours of clinical in order after your PhD or your PsyD in order to be able to be a right, therapist. Right, but I'm not at a PhD or PhD level. I'm. I have a master's, and basically, what I'm doing is. Um, I do group therapy with teenagers. I do a lot of work with autistic okay. children. And most of my um, my clinical hours were put in doing work with autistic children for the most and part. And one of the requirements... Of what? By the way, I... You know, the autistic kids is kind of cool because they're never going to go like, uh, right, look, right. you're subpar therapist. Right. Uh, right. I've been uh, working with this piece of clay and stuffing a crayon into it for over a year now. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to move on. My needs are not being met. Uh, and by the way, it, it starts off where, you know, you picture her uh, sitting there in Beverly Hills looking at uh, high-powered clients all day and then being a call girl at night. And it's a little more her volunteering at the Y. Well, the but day. be, be yes. that as it may, you can't be taking care of patients and be committing crimes. Those two things don't oh. go together. Well, true. It's only well, the crime. The because autistic the man. patients are during the day. Yeah, yeah but you I'm, can't. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't be a criminal and maintain a license. Maybe she has sex with the autistic patients at yeah. night. See, I, I was gonna. I let you actually you. say that. I know. And, you did. I set and you up. If, if yes. you, the, the problem with all of this is there's some very, very serious boundary problems here. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the simplest way to look at it is being a criminal and being a clinical caretaker. Those Let's two not judge. That, that's not a simple judge. boundary that's to look at. That's the man that made it a crime. Do you understand? Crime doesn't oh. pay. Yes. Drew, you drive faster than the posted speed limit <laughs> most all the time, do you not? Not, any, not anymore. Ooh, what a, oh, we are. Okay, but you used to after yeah. getting all the tickets. Well, how can you be a doctor and break the law? Aha. Yeah. Touche. Little Touche, yeah. I say. Touche, turtle. Touche away. Julie? 
Yeah, I'm still here. All right, so <laughs> she's waiting for you guys to stop. Yeah, I can understand, uh, yeah. I can understand how, Dr. Drew's reaction, and I was sort of um, I've been intrigued to call for a long time based on trying to get his perspective on it. I mean, the natural thing that comes to my mind as a therapist and a criminal <laughs> is is there some bipolarity, or am I going through some sort of hypomanic episode? Is there? Yeah, you've got a like lot. You 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 shouldn't be taking care of patients. That's well, you know so what, but, very very clear. Whatever you want to do with your life, that's up to you. But you have a certain modicum of health that you must be able to sustain and of le good legal standing in order to be in the position of being responsible for people's health and well-being. And that's it. Yeah, Whatever you want to do beyond that is up to you. Right, but the legality issues, I mean, there are places where... No, no, it's no. Legal. No, no, no. Not legal. It's an issue. It's, a, it's there to protect the patients. That's why the laws are put in place. Well, That's why we have the standards with, we have. Because, sex with the patients. Because if Absolutely you are, not. I do have very clear boundaries. Because, and no, you don't. I don't no. let the two aspects of my life Hold on. Together. Yeah, hold on a second. Yeah. Yeah. First off, didn't you ever see that uh, movie from the 80s, Angel, where she was an <laughs> honor roll yeah. student by right. day and a Hollywood hooker at night? Right. Was like, someone was just talking about that at, at work the other day. The girl, the, po the movie poster, she had a Catholic school uniform on, remember? Split in Split half. Split in half. Yeah. And then she had her suit on. It was very with obvious. With her blazer open and a bra. It was very easy for her to live the double life, Drew. <laughs> and glasses. Yeah. All right, now hold on. Let anyway, the talking. Hold on, okay. Drew. She's um, not having sex with her patients. Adam? You understand what if she, that? Let's just say, just what if she's robbing banks? Mmm, even you know sexier. I mean? Is she doing therapy and robbing banks, or is she stripping and robbing banks? Yeah, but the, the point is that there are, the, there are standards that clinicians have to maintain that is there to protect the public. I love it. And if you, can't, if, you, if you can't maintain those standards, then you shouldn't be doing the public I service. know, but here, here's, here's the reality, Drew. Many, many therapists especially are nut jobs. It Not like this. Maybe not, not like bit. this, but it attracts and, nut and, jobs. and by the way, let's remember that she's she's wondering, gee, am I bipolar manic? Listen, if you're an uncontrolled bipolar manic that is engaging in behaviors that are impulsive and dangerous, you shouldn't be taking care of patients. Very simple. Even All if you're right. thinking you might be that patient, you shouldn't True. be taking care of people. So there you go. Take your even your light coma, Adam. Light coma, even. Take take comet, your, comet. take your judgment hat off for a second, and and put on your party hat. Okay. <laughs> Which one? The one that put the on your doctor by day. The, no, the pointy. The one fedora with, or the pointy one with the yeah, with the little the, thing the that you blow on. The pointy one with the unfolds. elastic strap that goes yeah, on your yeah, chin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Julie. Yeah. Uh, how many uh, how many clients would you say you see a week in the evening in your in your the call evening? Girl I job? probably work three days a week, and I probably see three clients in that time, like three and per day. You, and you have you have sex with them? Yes. And uh, what's how much money you make? You make. Um, I'm, I'm getting by, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I just wanted to say to Drew as well. I, because of my inclination towards being a very sexual person, that was the reason I had questioned. You know, is that this is a very typical bipolar behavior? I didn't question whether I was. I'm not bipolar. I don't have any sort of mental deficit. I've just made a different choice in my life. Yeah. And well, I here's, think here's, but here's what's going on, Julie, because uh, right. Drew's got his party hat on, and now he can't talk. But I'm going to speak <laughs> for him, because Drew's okay. the man, and people don't want to listen to Drew. But what people oh. don't realize is I'm smarter than Drew. So you need to listen to me. Uh, here's the thing. First off, you're calling because there's a part of you that doesn't feel like it's okay. Otherwise, you wouldn't be calling trying to uh, get Drew's blessing and rationalize it away. There's uh, your smart person, obviously you're, you're uh, intellectual, and you have the capacity to understand that what you're doing is wrong. But then you end up using your IQ to talk yourself out of it with the very sexual per person nonsense and all these other smoke screens. So your intellect is what's actually uh, enabling you to go on with this uh, lifestyle because you're, you're, you're talking your way around it, and you're just BSing yourself. You know there's a part of you that's uh, sick and that shouldn't be doing this, and I think you understand that, and maybe that part is just emerging, and maybe you're not going to be ready to listen to it for a few more years. Okay, well, that seems very insightful, but Thank you. I do want to throw... That's enough. Yeah. I end with really, me being insightful. Mm -hmm. And again, she's always go out on a on a and, 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 and if you want, if you, if you want to yeah. know the the character disturbance here, she starts up with, I think I may be bipolar because this is such bipolar behavior. And then she describes the behavior and goes, "Well, that couldn't possibly be me. I just told you, I, you know, it's not me." Well, it's like, uh, okay, that's all distortions. That's all blaming right. outside of the self, not taking responsibility. It's all character stuff. Okay. So and, she's and again, 
you're a very sexual girl who has a good life and career. But isn't that, isn't that kind of like us? a sociopath who takes themselves out of the situation and, well, and completely justifies it's it? It's more borderline. It's more borderline behavior. It's a sociopath. Yeah, they do justify and they can't take responsibility for anything. Right. Yeah. Right. And and she has an answer. She's an educated woman, so every time you throw something at her, she is, uh, you know, she's she li- analyzing she it listens yeah. and she then an she's answer. diplomatic and she says, well, Adam, I've heard what you have to say, but then psycho babble, psycho babble, psycho babble, yeah. I'm going to blow a, a Japanese businessman. But what about all the dancers <laughs> that have to, and I say dancers with the bunny ears, right. that are putting themselves through school mm. by working at night? Yeah. Right. And getting a degree. Ne- never Problem met one that wasn't sexually abused. In psychology. And by the way, their schools cost four dollars a unit. Right. Yeah. They're not. They're, it's not. They're put, not putting themselves through Princeton or Brown. No, they're going in with two hundred dollar bills, singles. Yeah, right. paying for the they, they say, paying for the class. They say putting themselves through school. What they're really doing is just going to junior college, doing a little blow, and not really wanting to work too much. Mm. All right. Let's take a little break. Bonnie Somerville uh, here tonight of uh, NYPD Blue fame. Tuesday nights, ABC, 10 o'clock. Also, without a paddle, the in theaters uh, as we speak. Take a, a quick break. Be right back after this. Hello. This is your radio. Radio. Love line. We'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, get it on, everybody. Bonnie Somerville uh, here tonight. Breath of blonde, fresh air, Drew. Thank you. Passionate, passionate woman as well. <laughs> and understands quality. Oh. i got to say that. She likes you. Me. Yes. <laughs> she, she appreciates and me. And Crank Yankers, which started tonight. Loves Crank Yankers. Uh, loves loves Love Line. Loves it all. I used to watch you guys on MTV. Used to watch wow. us guys on MTV. In Boston College. Boston wow. College watching Drew and Adam on MTV. Yep. yep. Thinking one day I'm going to be on that nappy headed guy's radio show. <laughs> God willing. On his radio show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a good ending to that yeah. sentence. Ooh, sexual. Do you hear that, Drew? <laughs> Passion. I'm, I'm, it's, it's making me feel a little weird. <laughs> I got to say, I'm. Uh, I'm intimidated by Bonnie's passion. I can tell. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can I imagine. I, there's a part of me that would like to, you know, step into the ring with her, but another part that's, that just thinks, uh, no, I can't compete with that kind of passion. That's smart. <laughs> now, now I'm horny again. <laughs> yeah. Drew, though, who has not, le- uh, has not lost a passion, step. Is uh, would would gladly uh, put the gloves on and uh, enter the passion in ring. in my day, in back his in day. The day, back when he in was single, day. back when he was single. Do you have triplets? I do. Wow, I twelve years old, almost twelve, almost twelve. Wow. Yeah, and that's the pa- passion legacies is going to be. Yeah. I, I, he talk the, about passion. That's oh, what I'm yeah. talking about. <laughs> All right, Drew. <laughs> Drew's passionate about his passion. That's all right. <laughs> Sarah? Yeah. You're 26? Yes, I am. What's up? Well, um, I was listening to the 16-year-old earlier talk about her mom, how her mom went and had affairs and took her with her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I had that happen both with my mom and my aunt. My, actually, my question, let's get back around to that in a minute, mm-hmm. um, is I had no boundaries my whole life, and I'm just learning. I actually didn't even know what they were. I'm, you're in, you're in, but you're in therapy now. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he was talking about boundaries, and I felt really stupid, but I said it. I said, what are boundaries? I, right. It's amazing. Like, well, I, had, I was very promiscuous. I don't even know how many men I've slept with. Okay. And um, I was just wondering, what, how, how do I know who to sleep with? Because <laughs> I'm very you, sexual. Yeah, I, don't, maybe just take some time out. Well, you, you will begin to be attracted to and to attract a whole different kind of person once your therapy gets underway. Well, I, haven't had, I hadn't had sex in nine months, and then this guy just recently, obviously a player, because... And well, I was so stupid, I said, are you a player? Like, he's going to answer, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, well here, here's a way you can judge it. If you're super attracted to the guy... Don't that's answer. That's the guy yeah. you shouldn't yeah. be with. Exactly. Oh, that sucks. 
Well, I know. That's the way it is. Yeah. Until you get a little more therapy. A little more therapy, then you'll start getting attracted to people that are actually healthy. And well, yeah, I, I was with family. the guy for six and a half years. It was very healthy. An engineer. You drove him crazy, though. There was no, yeah. Like, I was the wild I'm one. Sure, I'm sure you did. And he, you know, would go, do you want to have sex? And I'd be like, no. <laughs> what are you doing? I mean, he d he wouldn't just take me or, you know, be aggressive about all it. Right, all right, all right. She would have Sarah, to cheat on him to... Make yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, of course, because yeah, if he's a good guy, Eventually. you're not going to be able to tolerate that. Well, right. I loved him so much. I know, I know. you loved him, but you love chaos more. So yeah. That sucks. Yeah, I know, well, but look. He, you're doing something thing. about it, at least. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're in therapy. Good you're for you. You're in therapy, Thank but you. you sound like you're 15. I mean, you, you've <laughs> seen a lot. You've been through a lot. Just trust the process a little bit. Let yourself go, Sarah. Yeah. Well, Stop clinging to I the old. No, I don't tell her to let herself go. That's I mean, what, like, what got her in trouble. Stuff too, so I'm trying to get over that whole addiction thing, I guess. You're an addict? Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you addicted mm -hmm. to? Coke. Mm -hmm. And you're in a program now for addiction? Yes. Group and you're, therapy. Well, no, wait a minute. You, you have a sponsor? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in a um, cognitive... Cognitive... Um, yeah. Cognitive mm -hmm. behavioral? Management. Yeah, not an not a AA thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. you might want to look into AA because that would uh, also work on some of the other stuff you're trying to manage. I do need, because I'm alone, and so I yeah. do need... Go, I need go, to, go to CAA. You would do so, people would do so great in those programs. They do. Yeah. Yeah, and, and look, uh, Sarah, here's the thing. You're trying to become uh, a, a, a slightly different person from who you were, and it's tough. I mean, you have to... Uh, it takes time. Yeah. What are they... Uh, what do they call that? Molting? What do they call that when the uh, when the snake sheds its skin? Uh, There's a good name for it. Come on, you college people. Hmm. There's a good yeah. name. Like uh, I think snakes when they get out of their skin, and uh, like tarantulas. Is that? I'll try molting? to find it. I'll try to find it before yeah. we're back. Oh, well, molting was what I said. So is that what it is? Yeah, molting sounds yeah, what right. You said. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, I mean that's what you're doing. It's it's kind of painful, and you don't want to leave the old skin behind, but you got to just leave it leave it behind. And it takes yeah. a lot of work to yeah. change. It's hard work. I know, and it's scary, and you don't want to do it. And you want to cling. So yeah. go to uh, CA, please. All right, let's just uh, I gotta take a break here, but uh, real uh, fast, like uh, Amber. Hi. Been on hold for sixty minutes. Uh, current boyfriend won't stay hard during sex. Why is it your fault? First time ever. No, it is not your fault. And if and if it doesn't stay hard while he's actually having intercourse with you, that's really not your fault. No, I mean yeah. that's that's seriously his fault. And that could be drugs. It could be medication. Yeah. It could be biological. a million things. Yeah. Could be biological. Could be uh, something pharmacological. Right. You should just talk to him, but do not blame yourself. All yep. right. We will uh, take a quick break. Drew, you want to just go? Get out no, of here. No, I'm looking at molting. I'm looking at molting. All right. We'll be right back right. after this. Love line. Love line. We'll be right back. You know, Drew, smelling good is more than a smell. It's an attitude. That's true, Adam. It is? Yeah, yeah. I, I know how to get that attitude, too. How? Break With down. Axe deodorant body spray. Everybody, that's the show. I want to thank uh, Bonnie Somerville for coming in here tonight. Thank you. Now, dear, dear friend of the show. Thank you. NYPD Blue, Tuesday nights, 10 o'clock on ABC. 12th big season, also uh, without a paddle. which Molting, is, uh, Adam, molting. It is molting. Yes. Well, that's what I said, right? Yeah, you're right. All right. And that's watch right. Adam on the Late Late Show. That's yes, right. everybody tune in that. Three nights. That's right. Three big nights. Three big ones. Three, maybe you'll see Bonnie there and possibly Drew in it. You might maybe, see me in person. I can see like cut to Friday Friday night. Uh, Engineer Chris, what's it like working with me? Because <laughs> <laughs> I need two, you know. I'm there, man. You're there? All right, buddy. Uh, get yourself a little haircut. We'll take a uh, extendo 22-hour break and... Uh, We'll have a puddle of mud in here tomorrow night. We're going to take calls from Iraq. Nice. Puddle of mud was wow. just in Iraq doing a USO thing. And uh, now we're going to take calls from the soldiers in Iraq for us. That's so cool. Very cool. So bye, until, Drew. Bye, bye, Drew. Sorry so to until, meet you. Until, uh, oh, Drew, yes. But I'm oh, telling yes. you, hey, she could have broke up your marriage. She really no, could have. No, oh, no. She could have. She could have. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. I feel sorry for his balls, to be honest. This has been Loveline. Loveline.
The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The, 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 the producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.